You all know me and my videos are about ideas and sharing them. This one is going to be about information about this old lathe, the Colchester. There was nothing available on the internet as far as uh, information about the bearings and everything else goes. So I thought I'm going to do this one and put it out there just in case somebody has the same lathe and comes across the same problems. Just so you're aware, all the gib strips have been drilled out, or I should say the old threads. Now I've got decent sized grub screws in them, which are now protruding so I can see and actually fit. And I've also got a nice little cut down Allen key there so it fits everything. Thanks to Paul Hopewell from The Shed Dweller, who suggested spring loading. I've got some Belleville washers coming to go under the lever at the back end. So that was a good, uh, good little tip that was Paul, thank you very much for that. But this video is going to be about the bearings. But before I lift the lid off, I need to get rid of some of that shit up on top of there. And hang on, the only way for getting rid of shit properly is, hold on, this is not easy. Got to get the right material. Right, hang on. Yeah, they're clean. Give it a little bit of a rub down first, and then once all the crap is off here, I'll pop the lid off and show you what I'm doing. Now, considering this lathe is, as I've mentioned so, so many times, eight years old, if you look inside the gearbox, it looks just like a new one. Uh, never ceases to amaze me. But then again, it is a Colchester. So, the bailing setup. Um, this is for Ben. No, it's not tape roller, unfortunately. It is bronze. And if you look down inside of there, you can see the end of the bailing protruding. You can't on this side, because... That is a ball thrust bearing in there. But on the outside of here, you'll see there's a locking ring again and a locking ring. Now I will say the damage to the locking ring has not been done by me on either side. This is as I got it. Now to adjust the bearings on this machine, I only actually need to slacken that ring off. But what I'll do, I'll strip out the change gear end because I want to take this off completely even though I've done it already, but I missed, well, it was a mistake, I had to find out. And I put it back together, then I thought about doing the video. So, give me a second, and I'll just pop all this off so you can see it. Like, I slapped the ring off completely, it's almost fallen off. This ring controls thrust on the shaft. So basically, everything's done on this here. Now, because I've slackened that off, the shaft, if I tap it, you can actually see is floating so this controls only one element of the three bearing system let me just push that back forward again if it'll go it should go back into place now if i take this off and put it somewhere sensible that i don't lose it take that off that's a rolling or mating face or running face and then the point i wanted to show you was Something I've never seen on a bearing before. Right, let me just grab a pair of my underpants. And by the way, they're all clean. There was ones from the back of the cupboard, which unfortunately know but three sizes too small for me. If I give this a little wipe, yeah, you see the bearing is threaded. And it's also threaded on that end. So it's a tapered bearing that you can adjust by pulling the locking that's back and forth. So that's the interesting part. I've never seen it before. I thought this is the reason I better share it. So the simple setup with this is you drop the ring back on and pull up so it's relatively hand tight. Making sure that both locking rings on this side a slack. Now I don't know if this is the correct procedure or not because I'm basically making this up as I go along. So this turns so free now it'll just freewheel, it'll spin if I take the key out otherwise I'll smack myself in the head. And the natural progression is to tighten this one until there's resistance on the shaft and then lock it with that ring and repeat on this. Tighten this one so you pull the beard in inwards into the taper and then lock it in place with this. So I'll get the first one set up and I'll show you. Right, I've jumped ahead a little bit, I'm afraid. So as I said in the earlier part, I've tightened this collar up here, 
until I had drag on the shaft as I was turning it. Locked it with this one. And then I've come across to the check end and I've tightened this one up to the point where I have drag again but, um, on the shaft. Now, if I grab the Allen key and pull, it feels like at this moment in time that the shaft is locked. But once I start it moving, it's very, very free. Well, I wouldn't say very free, but it just holds. And I think that's really where the oil, or she's settling down to where the oil isn't. So what I'm gonna to have to do is run this up for a while. And if it gets warm, I'm gonna to have to slacken the bearings off. But now I know how to do it. It's only a matter of slackening that collar and adjusting the bearings, it's relatively easy. The other thing I've got to consider as well is the fact that this probably hasn't been adjusted in years. So I'm thinking on the lines that the bronze bearing is now running slightly further down the shaft in an area it's never running before. So that pickup might be just a case of the bearing picking up on the new area of metal and it might need a little bit of time to settle. So I'm gonna to have to monitor it. So all I need to do now is basically, well I can't do it with that all because somebody's already bastardized it. Oh, but uh bugged it. Nip that up, and then it's a case of going to the thrust bearing end, which is there, and the collar, which will stop the end float. Right, so off camera again. Unfortunately, I've got to do it off camera because I don't even possess a tripod, so I'm either holding the mobile phone or I got on a little selfie stick. So what I basically done is tightened it up until this stopped rattling because it will rattle. Gone to the other end, got the old maraca hammer, just give it a little tap down again, making sure that everything's bedding in. And then finally, after tightening up, make sure that this collar is oh this gear is still locked. And then try to see if I can spin the thrust bearing which is now locked. I've got a fair bit, well I wouldn't say a fair bit, I got a nice bit of drag on that, what I would consider a new bearing fit. Now as I said because the bearings are uh, protruding, that's the word I was looking, slightly more, it means they're running on a different part of the shaft. Can't see that side because obviously that's a deep collar but you can see, if I can try and get it right, a gap now between this point and that point. And that gap is where the bronze bearing inside is protruding out further. And whereas this was almost touching, now I've got a gap to show that I've pulled the bearing through by... That's got to be a good millimetre gap there, I would suggest. You can just about make sense of what's happening there. But it's locked up. So, I suppose I better put the rest of it back together. The unfortunate part is, at this moment in time, I don't even know if you can see that. It's a bit warm in here. And uh, I'm leaking. Lucky enough, I've got plenty of um, items to wipe my forehead with. When I get back together, I'll do another little video showing it running. But that's it for now. And like I said, this is information for people for the future. And if you have got one of these lathes and you see this at some time, I hope it has helped you in some way. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks as usual to all the subscribers. It's brilliant. Thank you. Um, see you soon.